I got in some really cool interviews while I was there, which I'll put up uh, on eGear and link to from here. But um, the guys from this movie called The Necessary Death, which is a fascinating movie about, um, it's a fake documentary about a guy who decides to make a documentary about someone who's decided to kill himself. He puts a posting up on Craigslist and says, I'm looking for someone. If you're planning on killing yourself, I want to film you. I'll film preparations right up to the final act. And I get all these responses, and it's a question of you know, who does he pick and what happens next. And it's just as disturbing as it sounds, but I highly recommend it. It's my, my guess is it will get distribution because it's doing so well, at least at the South by Southwest premiered, sold out at screenings. I think you're going to see, I think you're going to hear a lot of buzz about this uh, throughout the year. Uh, my prediction will get distribution by the end of the year. Uh, but I interviewed the director and the cinematographer from that, and that was really cool. I uh, interviewed Jonathan Colton, who's internet rock star, um, Frank Warren of, Pops, of Post Secret. Um, I always want to call that pop secret. I feel so bad, but at least I didn't do that in the interview. Um, I did, however, forget to turn on the camera for the first part of the Jonathan Colton interview, so that was nice and embarrassing. And then Burr Tunde, a uh, friend of the show. Um, I tried to interview him last year, but he had no voice, and we tried to do this thing with the computer, but the lighting was all off. And Anyway, we did it again this year. He had a voice, and he had lots and lots to say. I haven't edited it yet, but it's very, very long, very, but very, very good. I'm going to have the trouble figuring out what parts to pin down. But anyway... He's the uh, web editor of The Onion now. He's had great fortune since I last saw him, and he's heavily, heavily into the Obama campaign, doing lots of really fascinating stuff with that. Again, that whole idea of providing tools. He's basically crowdsourcing the Obama campaign. Yes, I was there for the Mark Zuckerberg uh, train wreck Facebook interview. Um, not a train wreck because of him, but because of Sarah Lacey, the, the interviewer. And having been there, I can say that whatever criticisms have been leveled there are pretty much justified. Um, basically, it's, it's as if... There's sort of two comparisons I can make. One is that you know there's always someone at a, at a at a keynote at a panel who asks a question from the audience, and the question isn't really a question; it's them just talking on and on and on and without a question in sight. It's kind of like if that person were giving the interview. Uh, another fair comparison would be to if Tyra Banks were giving the interview. You know, Tyra tends to make most of the interviews she gives about herself. Same deal here. I'm kind of glad I was there to sort of see you know history in the making, as it were. Um, but it was still kind of painful to sit through. I don't know if I wouldn't have been better off just sort of getting some lunch. The ex exact opposite end of the uh, keynote spectrum, uh, Jane McGonigal, um, who works on alternate reality games, which I wasn't even going to go to the session, but uh, Kevin was really into it, and some other people were like, oh, you got to see this, she's amazing. So I was like, okay. And uh, I go, and again, I'm not that much into uh, any kind of gaming, really, you know, MMO part or MMORPGs or alternate reality games or any of this stuff. But she was fascinating. Um, she was talking about happiness and how happiness could be achieved. It's sort of the, the happiness that's being studied now. There's a whole new wave of psychology studying happiness. And she's saying that the qualities of happiness they're listing are all qualities that uh, people who are gaming can achieve. A lot of what she's talking about is instead of trying to make games more like reality, she's talking about trying to make reality more like games, which seems kind of messed up at first, but when you think about it, she's talking about ways to make life easier, ways to make life more convenient, ways to make life more manageable. People who are taking the, uh, the principles of, of alternate reality gaming and applying them to sort of daily chores. In fact, literally, there's an alternate reality game for daily chores, and you sort of get experience points for doing these chores. Um, around the house, and it's wildly successful. It's almost as if we need that sort of medium to uh, to make our real lives uh, more entertaining. Not even necessarily more entertaining, but more sort of manageable. Give us sort of a filter to process them through, which is something that games can do very well, but real life doesn't do very well at all. Real life isn't isn't very good at giving you feedback, for example, and that's one of the things uh, alternate reality games do very well. So it's sort of like that, sort of finding ways to make the real world uh, more accessible, more user friendly. Uh, that was fascinating, and I got to meet her very, very briefly after when I went to Marshall Herskowitz's, which was also a really good uh, panel about uh, Quarter Life, which was the series that, born on the internet, eventually made it to TV, and now is sort of going back to the internet, and its future is uncertain. But it was sort of a fascinating study in the different mediums and what each requires and how we sort of flow from one to the other. And here's this guy who has history in movies and television. He's Ed Zwick's uh, producing partner, um, you know, responsible for 30-something. Actually, Jane McGonigal got up and thanked him right there for 30-something. For that was kind of a neat moment. But um, responsible for all this stuff, and here he is moving to the internet because he had grown to absolutely hate TV, and not TV, the medium, but TV, the people working in TV, and all the crap that they uh, put people through when they try to produce something. He's doing a TV, sh an internet TV show, and a social networking website, and tying the two together so that again you get this weird crowdsourcing effect where he's talking about maybe for the next season he's going to try to have the people who write into the show 
or right right into the uh, to the website producing the clothes. You know, somebody on there is really good at making clothes. Maybe they can produce clothes for the TV show. Someone's art can show up in the background of the TV show. So again, he's crowdsourcing the production design of the TV show. But all in all, a great South by Southwest. I've probably rambled on about it far too much, but um, thanks for tuning in. And to all those of you who were there, it was great seeing you. Um, to all those of you who weren't there, I hope to see you there next year. Bye. Me fail English? That's impossible.